long day. I got a lot to say. It feels like I'm carrying a two-ton weight. I go to see a friend. Hello, I'm Monsignor Patrick Winslow, and I am Father Matthew Cowth, and we are speaking from the rooftop. A podcast brought to you by Ten Books, in which we invite you to join our conversation out here in the open air. Where we look out upon the world around us from the rooftop of the church and share with you what we see. Makes me wanna scream from the rooftop to the screen. I... Uh, hello there. Hello, Father Patrick Winslow. How are you? And I'm fine, Father Matthew Kauth. Just in case people don't know who we are. <laughs> Trust me, the 10 people listening know who we are. Unfortunately. We actually, I, I have to say, I've, I've had some positive feedback. Rarely people come up and give you negative feedback on this sort True. of thing, right? They just tune you out. But the and fact feel free not knows, to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're, we're not inviting negative feedback. Um, I, I rather, uh, I've been surprised how genuine people seem to be about enjoying their time listening. Uh, that's really kind of exciting to hear. Uh, And as I always say the same thing back to them, I hope that you have friends that you can talk to about deeper spiritual matters. That if anything, if we do anything, I I pray that inspires you to allow some friendships, uh, indeed, I would hope all your meaningful friendships, to go deeper and to be substantive uh, because in the end they survive. I don't mean, I, I was very close to people in college and, you know, long ago, but sometimes I have a hard time remembering their names. Yeah. You know, I would have never thought that back then, ever, because I couldn't have conceived of having a life without them some way in some in some fashion in, in my life. Mm. But now fast forward, you know, how many decades, uh, we all learn that life moves on, their circumstances change and uh, yeah. distance occurs. And, and I can tell you that the relationships that have endured the decades are the ones that had some foundation of something substantive like the faith right it was not dependent on circumstance well it's funny you bring that up i was just back in illinois for a funeral and i've not been back to my hometown in Mm. probably 20 some years wow that must have been nostalgic it was very weird and wonderful at the same time i the people were so kind how sweet um but it was a rather large funeral of a classmate of mine and it filled the largest church in the city yeah i bet it would He was extremely um, active in the faith. And so the people that came to this were my classmates, you know. Sure. A lot of the people that came. I hadn't seen them this long. A bit of a reunion. So it was. And what was interesting is that those who came, came because they were practicing the faith for the most part. Right. It still bound them together. It bound them together. And those who came to talk to me afterwards that were my classmates... And as you say, I didn't, I didn't really I need a name have tag. any recollection right, yeah, of what I, we did or what we didn't do. Sure. I mean, very little. Remember my football team, a little bit more. Right. Um, but it was, you know, those are people I spent four years with and were, were close, was close to. At the time. Um, but the discussions we had didn't surround what we did in high school. Right. The discussions surrounded what they've done in some ways up until that point, up until the point we met each other again in the faith. Mm-hmm. Because we all went our separate ways. Mm-hmm. And these people kept, these are the ones that kept the faith. And it was so interesting. You're still bound. To discuss the fact that, that we're bound by this mystical body of Christ. Mm-hmm. It was a delightful experience, a really powerful one. It endures time. Yeah. I mean, obviously. Yeah. And the other circumstances change and the relationships that are predicated on circumstances, they fall away. Yeah. Uh, they just have to. Yeah. Um, but to have the firm ground of faith. It really is. It's extraordinary. Yeah, indeed. And to be able to maintain it. Now, you know, now you have so many different tools of communication that you can survive the change of circumstances. But, of course, you don't want to accrue so many friends over the arc of time that you have. You can barely keep up yeah. you know, with no, you can, maintaining. It's always limited in this It's life. always limited. So there are those few that have deeper and greater significance and meaning. And they're worth retaining and they're worth making sure that... Uh, they have a, a common foundation of something substantive like that of the faith yeah. and purpose and meaning in life. You know, as, as you were speaking, I since I wasn't really paying attention, yeah, um, 
I was just thinking. Which is why, <laughs> which is why I set my bar really low. No, I was <laughs> when it comes to friends, to how talk the circumstances about. change and and people move on. I was I was just thinking about you know we're in the season here that I, I'm thinking a little bit about the Magi and the fact that they spent a very significant portion of their life leaving their lives and going after this king. I love the image of the Magi. I do too. It's my favorite. I mean, fantastic. And then they leave, but it's like... What did they do? What did they do when they got back? There's it must have had some inspiration. And, yeah. and, and I suppose it's somewhat similar to the men that, that wanted to follow the Jesus and he said no. Oh, them, yeah. Or the shepherds, for example. And, yeah. and But I just I got to thinking, as you were saying, about the circumstances changing and all that. Like For the rest of their lives, this shaped it. Whatever sure. they did, this was the seminal point. And when they died, and when heaven was opened up to them, because you can imagine that if you traveled across the world to give the baby Jesus, you know, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, you're going to get a nice reward. Yeah, you know, I'm <laughs> when with anyone you. else wants to see him. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> those magi. You, they hit made the, it. you hit the lottery there. Yeah, maybe. you hit the yeah. lottery. So, so of time the, wisely spent of the classic nativity scene, keeping prescinding from Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Yeah. Who's your favorite figure at the crash? Well, when I think about you, I, I think about <laughs> the ox oh, and the ass. I know, I know. I can. That's probably us I, right there. The you know, <laughs> pick one. Oh, well, that's a good question. I'm really fond of the Magi. That, those are three. And outside of that, I don't know that I have a real favorite. I mean, I love thinking about things from the perspective of St. Joseph. Mm. Um, so I probably would choose You're not allowed to. to see the scene through his eyes. I, I enjoy that the most. Yeah, but I, I, that's not the exercise I gave you. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. We don't know you can't, anyone else. You, you can't All we got is some shepherds and some questions. angels. Like, what else we got? It's a foul. I'm you, throwing a flag on the play. You can't change the question. Okay. So the question is... We can get down this exercise. We can do this exercise. The exercise. question is... Outside of our Blessed Mother of and the Holy Saint Family Joseph and Jesus, this is you said the Magi. I said the Magi. You said the Magi. I'm good with that. Okay. All right. So, you? For me? Yeah. The drummer boy. I knew you were going to say I, that. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> oh, please do not bum, sing. Bum, 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 bum. Wow. I mean, that's recorded now. I. So I want you to listen to this podcast I love, and play it on the radio and then play your singing of that. Did St. Francis include the drummer boy or is that something that his disciples had to correct? I, I don't no know if the little idea. drummer boy was there. The little drummer all right, boy was well, first of all, crash. I'm only half joking to all those who are listening. I'm, the, the part of me that's joking is, of course, obviously, this is not part of the crash scene. However, the part of me that's accurately representing something of myself is I love that Chris that Christmas hymn. What it's not saying? a hymn. What is it? What do you Christmas it's Carol song? Christmas song, Carol. Whatever. So I love it because it's just so beautiful. Well, the, the image of a little so boy. Awesome, the sentiment it? is wonderful. The boy that always that's all, all he has, and that's all he wants. You know that that, that our Lord wants us. Yeah. He, he's it's not the stuff. He wants us, and it's just so beautifully represented in in, in that song. So I really really love. Uh, the imagery, I love the, the sentiment. Yeah, uh, I love, I love it all, and it's got a great sound. Now that said, I think I'd have to go with the Magi as well as an honest answer. You know, you gave a homily once at Saint Thomas, and you said something about it was on the Feast of the Epiphany, hmm. and I remember saying to myself, "You need to remember this is this is this is one of those moments where Father Winslow got." touched by grace and saw something and you need to remember that because that that's that is a gift of the holy spirit right there hmm. and i forgot it so did i <laughs> i don't remember anyway no um so if you speak about the magi what do you want to say because that was a really insightful homily i just remember sitting there because it was so often too that we get to hear homilies that we're always giving them that's right it's, it's rare and you may be envious of us you who are listening <laughs> but that's true <laughs> we want to listen to them but we just give them and so at saint thomas on rare occasions when we live together we could actually be at each other's masses 
and therefore, or if he came home. over to distribute communion, right. you got a little bit, got a little early before the homily yeah. ended, you could listen in. Or if you got there an hour after mass started, you could still listen to have Father Christian's homily because <laughs> he was still going. Oh yes, it wasn't hard. You always, you always catch forty five minutes of that homily. <laughs> That's right. Well, the nice thing about that was is you could have, you could eat popcorn. Oh. Know, up until the offertory and still make Oh, that's fast. true. Exactly. <laughs> you can have breakfast during the reading of the gospel and you'll be fine. No, so I, no, I, do, I don't know what I would have said, but it's certainly worthy of reflection. I said worthy. It's a bad way to put it. It's a rich area of reflection to consider the Magi and their pilgrimage to Bethlehem, uh, to really enter into it and consider it and its implications. And this kind of goes back to some of our conversation about how to meditate on the rosary or the mysteries Mm -hmm. of the rosary. How do you scratch the surface of these things so that you can go deeper into them? And clearly having some opportunity to study, some opportunity to read up on uh, some context, some history, some interpretation, some, some theology, all of those things are really very valuable because they become kind of grist for the mill when you approach something like a reflection on the Magi and, or for that matter, a mystery of the rosary. They all can be employed and brought in and be brought to bear to shed some light on and go deeper. And that's where you can talk about things like, I remember uh, Ratzinger, Pope Benedict XVI before he was Pope, I think offered some reflections, the Magi representing the sciences or something, where I think he talked about how they would be men of the natural studies and the natural mm-hmm. world. Reading the natural, the book of nature. The book of nature and and how nature is finding fulfillment through the scene of the epiphany, finding its, its, its fulfillment in the full light of God. And it was really just a very beautiful reflection. And I would imagine that most people thinking about the Magi making their track to Bethlehem are not thinking about them representing the natural sciences and then the light of divine revelation is about to shine upon the you know the the natural the natural sciences and the complementary between reason and the complementarity between reason and faith but you can i mean that's that's how you go deeper and you reflect upon these mysteries you go down those rabbit holes you bring what you what you have to shine ahead of you to, to to make connections to glean insights I remember the, um, it's not terribly insightful, I suppose, but it, it, it did make me think years ago as a boy when, you know, every year we watched Jesus of Nazareth and yeah. uh, Zeffirelli's film, you know, because mm-hmm. it used to be played on TV mm-hmm. every year at, yeah. around Easter time. And I remember because of that, we fell in love with that movie. And then my my parents would, once VCRs came into, oh, into vogue and yeah. we had that, you didn't on, have to look uh, at the TV guide to see when it was going to play, right? So we had the we had the v, the, the um, cassette tape, whatever you call it, VHS VHS tape, and uh, and so we watched that scene up until after the Magi, you know, before Christmas. Mm. And I just remember that James Earl Jones was in it, you know, the oh, Vader yes. voice. He was one of the kings, was he? Oh, he was. yeah. And then two other individuals. But if you recall, it was an interesting insight, and whether it's true or not, it doesn't really matter. Sure. Um, but that they were three different kings from three different regions that ended up at the same epicenter hmm. because in following the star, they all got to the same place and then had to travel together after that. But they didn't start out together, which the, the right. text, of course, doesn't give us any information about that. But they came together from you know Persia, whether Persians or sure or whatever. Um, and I, I love that that it it drew them together as kind of the sign of the nations outside of Revelation, mm-hmm. but in the natural book, and then finally to that position of adoration. And I remember you bring up Ratzinger, the way in which, because of course the Epiphany is sometime after the birth of our Lord, and the text just says that they find the child with his mother which is the classic scene that we all see depicted with the Magi bowing down and Our Lady is holding the Christ child. But further than that, I remember Ratzinger noting that they had to, they had to bend down to get in there. Wherever they were, hmm. it's noted that they had to get inside, bend down to get inside. And, of course, Ratzinger sees that as a, saw that as a, uh, 
a seminal description of the kind of humility that's required, both of our intellects, but even of our bodies, to be able to worship properly. Interesting. That to see Christ, we have to mm. bend down. Right. How beautiful. That is beautiful, like a genuflection or a prostration, etc. That really is, I think, maybe one of the things that we can conclude about some of these thoughts that we're riffing on is that your celebration of Christmas will be made better by your reflection of the mysteries. Yeah. I mean, don't leave, don't outsource it. Yeah. Don't leave it as just someone else to do it for you. And, and especially, you know, don't count on the priest to give you the, the one home that's going to knock you out of the, mm. out of the park kind of a thing. You may or may not get it. Uh huh. And, and it's a hard, it's a hard moment for priests to preach because you often have people that haven't been in church all year. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, who's your target audience here? It's challenging yeah. to figure out how to speak to such a diverse crowd. Yeah. But that said, yeah, you really you really do. You want to take an opportunity to reflect, you know, stop and look at a manger scene. Think about what was unfolding reflect upon i mean just reflecting upon even the disposition of the animals saying how do how do these creatures respond to their creator made right. flesh right. right just even that is a wealthy a wealth rather of yeah. a potential reflection what, what and thought. possible discussion happened between our lady and saint joseph after mm. they hear the chorus of angels singing glory to god in the highest right shepherds come they leave Everything's quiet again. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> yes. And did our did our Lord have a you know did he cry as a baby? Did he uh, uh, did he have a full head of hair? I mean, he went one way or the other. He was he was a baldy, or he had a full head of hair. Or, <laughs> you know, it was either dark or it was light. Or, uh, I don't know. But it's but then you start to think about these these realities. It kind of drives home that he was enfleshed because you can't. You just can't equivocate on these things. They, it, it lands somewhere. It lands. Somewhere. It lands out of color. It lands, it lands out of volume. It lands out of size. There is a weight. This There's a this, height. This is the There's scandal a of particularity. Yes, you know it lands. And just thinking about those things and saying, "My goodness, he became man." I mean, it didn't. He just didn't become a concept of man. He actually became one. Yeah. And whatever, you know, whatever uh, persons that were the shepherds that evening or persons that were in the inn um, that wasn't closed to them, etc. Every one of them, I mean, how many of them knew that the Son of God was there? Well, none, right? None, yeah. except the ones to whom the angel yeah. mentioned it. And I thought to myself this morning when I was praying, I asked myself that question about why did the shepherds get to go? They weren't waiting for the Messiah. They weren't looking for the Messiah. Mm. But it, talk about our Lord's poverty, in, you know, not just in the, being born in the manger, in the stable, not having a place to lay his head, no inn, et cetera, et cetera. But no one was looking for him. Mm. But at least the shepherds were watching for something. They were just watching for sheep. And that was good enough. Mm. As if to say, our Lord, like, okay, at least you're up and you're watching for something. I'll let you in on the secret. Even well, though- yeah, or, you know, as you're saying that, I think to myself, maybe it was the angel saying, I'm sorry. The human family may be so broken and asleep to their own condition that they can't see that God was just made flesh. I'm going to wake up a few. I'm going to wake up a few. Uh, you know, well, they're already awake. Got, so exactly. These are already awake. Exactly. <laughs> I'm yes. going to get the guys that are awake. I'm going to get the exactly. I'm going to bring them in. Yep. Because uh, they're, say they're already awake. If the stones are going to cry out, exactly. How can you know? It's kind, of, cry it's kind of like the angels looking at us with pity to say, "Oh, for Pete's sake, I got to." I'm not keeping the secret sh- longer. Exactly. I got to <laughs> shake a few of these up. They're missing it. You know, you got to let somebody know. And you know what? They probably went and got the little drummer boy too. Oh, that's where the drummer boy came in. That's right. Because he started playing and people woke up. Exactly. Yeah. He was practicing at night because his mother didn't like the drum. And so uh-huh. as, during the day, but Jesus would hear, he had to do to chores. It. And oh. so he couldn't do it. So he he snuck out at night. See, this is an, this is in the apocryphal gospel. He snuck out at this night is like some... to go play his drum because he couldn't play it during the day. And he walks to a some secret... nearby field. Secret, recently discovered manuscript That's describing, right. and he saw a light emanating from the nativity, according the nativity, to the drummer boy. And he that'd be a fun book to write. I would love that. The nativity, the nativity from the eyes of the drummer of boy. the drummer boy. Oh, I'd read it. 
I'd write it. You oh, write good. It too. Oh, write it. You go ahead and write it. You do the hard work. I want. I want the. I want the that would be beautiful. I'd love it. But suffice it to say, do the work. Do the work of thinking, of asking God the questions, yeah. looking at these things. Make them particular because he didn't become an icon. Right? Mm. He became a man. It's it's true, and so much of our our life is interior. You know, that's really where we view the world around us, engage the world around us from this interior place. Don't just expect, I would say, I would counsel anybody not to just look outside oneself to be fed, but look inside oneself to, to, to peer, to gaze, to ask the questions, to explore what you already know to deeper levels. Uh, it's a bit like you know, a lot of ingredients are there, but put them together. Uh, Amen. See, see how they, they come together and, and nourish you in different ways. Amen. It's a bit like me and my cupboard with flour and sugar and vanilla. I mean, that's really boring, but I can make one heck of a cookie. You know, I mean, <laughs> that's what you're doing. I don't need any ingredients. It's, you, you realize that sometimes you're just sitting there like, well, what do I want? What do I want? And then you realize, I have ingredients. Oh, I can make something. You can make something. Oh, all of that can, you know, these cookies can come out of that closet, right? Not without some effort on my part, but I can make that happen. It's all right there. It's the same sort of thing. You have so much already (laughs) in your your noggin, in your interior life. It's just a matter of putting them together and, and seeing what you can come up with. Well, since you have moved us on to food. Oh, yes. Before we go, mm. I am intrigued if you've considered yet what your Christmas meal is going to be. Mm. That sounds to me like you have. Well, I because I've not settled yet, that's why I'm asking the oh. question. So I've done so many different things over the years. So what is the most common? I'll tell you what our most beef common beef is wins the most locally. common. For yeah, Christmas. okay, yeah. I mean, someone told me once, um, what about a ham? And I looked at them and thought, that's like a snack. I mean, ham is the main course. A snack. You could, you could get a spiral ham, honey baked ham, and just have it on the side. You can pick at while you're actually cooking real food. But a ham is not a meal. And so I said, "Well, you can make a ham steak." What is that? No, it's a ham. I don't know. So I've never had throwing ham out steak. hams. Lambs are for Easter. I don't do them at Christmas. Uh-huh. You know, we've done the fowl. We're already finished with. Thanksgiving, and I did both turkey and duck. So I'm, I'm done with the bird family. Uh huh. So what's left, you know? Um, so you could do some serious pig, but I'm thinking you know, I always do beef. So I think beef is wonderful. In my home, we, when I say home, my parents right. and the extended family come together, all at my parents' house, we do shellfish. So it's on Christmas. Mm hmm. It's well, Christmas, the Christmas, the big Christmas dinner is Christmas Eve. Right. So you, and it's you got stuffed Italian lobster yes, tail. So it's, it's back to the days. Of I we guess. Did, I mean, we did the seven fishes. But and, no, no, no. Not the fishes because I'm not a big fish fan. No, but I mean it's in the genre. It's in the genre. It's coming out of the ocean. It comes out of the ocean. So we have, we do what if by land stuffed, too, if <laughs> stuffed lobster tail, king crab legs, and stuffed shrimp. And then it's not uncommon that we also have some... Uh, roast as well to have some some beef represented, and it's delicious. I have to say, it's looked forward to every year. It, it's great. So but you, do have, you do a Christmas Day meal. Well, usually there's a lot of leftovers from Christmas Eve. So really, yeah. The the, the big see this is, has to do with the fact that you have the families that have to go back home that night and wake up Christmas morning, and then Christmas Day it's about going around and visiting the houses, like going around. To see, you know, my brother's house and my sister's house. Yeah, so of, you don't have big meals on Christmas Day. Not the day. Um, it's about yeah. going around. The Christmas Eve meal was well, our We never thing. did Christmas Eve meal because you can't eat a lot before you go to Midnight Mass. Well, see, we didn't go to Midnight Mass. Did you go to Mass? Yes. Pay, pay so mass? typically so typically, you would go to the, the vigil the Mass. The children's Mass. Right. Before. <laughs> That's why that children's Mass you, is so packed. It is. <laughs> and you come home and we would have it. And so what we would do is we would have our gift exchange among the family, yeah, uh, kids from extended family, like you know, uncles and aunts and things like that. But um, you would have the the kids waking up to gifts in the morning under the tree. That would take place 
after they went home and they woke okay. up in the morning. So that was kind of, it was a way of having your cake and eating it too, so yep. to speak. Yep. We were able to have a family Christmas and that was Christmas Eve. And we were able to have a, a grand family Christmas, like everybody together. And then you were able to have your, indiv- each household had their own Christmas morning. Gotcha. And then it could be the case that there was a Christmas meal, like a nice meal in one one of the homes or another. But since I wasn't one with a family, I'd be, you know, I'd go with my parents and we kind of go around. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in this case, you know, now that I'm down here, we, we in, anyway, I won't get into the details of the practical. It doesn't matter. The gist is the same. Seafood. Right. Seafood. It's delicious. It's yummy. And actually surf and turf is another way. So you can do, you don't have to do all of that seafood, but you could do the, sh- the stuffed shrimp. You could do a, a, a lobster tail. If you do a lobster tail, please make sure it's taken from cold water. Amen to that. Yeah, I mean. I think all of our listeners are certainly up on that, that yeah. policy. Oh, they must be. If they're not, they need to. <laughs> you know, do it's not true. get a warm, it's true. warm you know, lobster, lobster tail or Australian. Beast. No, no, no. It tastes like a big shrimp. If yeah. you want to taste the lobster, it has to come from a cold water. Cold water. All right. Well, that's no help because I'm definitely doing beef. Um, well, then, well, why can't I'm, you do surf and turf? What's your well, opposition? Well, I can, but here's the deal. You don't know how. I don't do surf. I don't. I never do surf. So but I only learn. do surf with you guys. And I'm not that big on surf. Oh, um, oh there you go. Because it's a lot a mess for 20 people. Yeah. Um, well, you do crab legs. They steam up pretty easy. All right. Well... If anyone has any suggestions, feel free to write to me. I've done all kinds of How about like a beef, beef Wellington? I did beef Wellington one year, like the serious beef Wellington. And yeah. I, I'm thinking about doing that, that again. It's a lot of process. Because I, I didn't nail it. Well, what about salt crust? Well, I love salt crust. Do you? I mean, do you do salt? You do salt crust with beef, right? I do, yeah. I've never had one. Yeah. Fish you do, of course, but. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen it with, you know, with fish and things, but you could try a salt crust. All right. This is going to be pondered about. What about, you know, mm, pottered over? Or paella, a Christmas paella. I did a paella about three weeks ago. It was awesome. Was it good? Yeah. Was it festive? It was just because it was glorious. Mm. And it was a good seafood option for Friday. Mm. And some family were in town, so. Oh, that is nice. So blessings to you all. We need to close this before I begin to think only about food. When I'm, when I think I'm that's too late. To <laughs> <laughs> that ship has sailed. <laughs> Blessings on you all. Have a wonderful yes, uh, Christmas. Have tide. a blessed Christmas. Hopefully, we'll be able to send one of these out during that short Christmas season. Amen. God bless you all. Bye Thanks for listening to this episode of From the Rooftop. For updates about new episodes, special guests, and exclusive deals for From the Rooftop listeners, sign up at rooftoppodcast.com. And remember, for more great ways to deepen your faith, check out all the spiritual resources available at tanbooks.com. And we'll see you again next time. From the Rooftop. Anywhere you are.